Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Greg Klass from the Metro Planning Commission. He's in charge of redistricting the Nashville area after the uh, 2020 census. Uh, Greg, uh, in 2011, when the, when the uh, Planning Commission redrew the lines, uh, they did something a little unusual. For the first time, they took the 4th District, which had historically been north and east of the river, and put it down in the south part of the county. Uh, that was confusing to some folks. Will you keep it that way, likely, in, in 2021, or will you um, move it or move it back up where it has been in the past, where in the sort of around the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th districts up north and east of the river? Sure. Um, I would not expect District 4 to move back up uh, this cycle. Um, you know, generally, like I said earlier, we're seeing a lot of the population continue to grow in southeast. So there's kind of a need for those districts to shrink um, and kind of move southeast somewhat. Um, so that that would that would make it very difficult to move uh, District 4 back north. I, I will say um, it's not actually the first time we've had a district move across the river. Um, I think District 11, as originally drawn, was north of the Cumberland and now represents Old Hickory south of the Cumberland. So it's it's happened a couple times in the past. I have seen one media report that if you change those numbers and move them as a council member in that district or in the new district that is term limited, they can run again. Is that true? Uh, that is not our, our understanding, but that's more of a question for legal. It's not um, it's either, not, it's just not. wondering what you heard about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's generally... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to say, generally, we look uh, to, pro to to avoid putting uh, incumbents who are eligible to run again into the same district. We don't want to kind of force people head to head. We don't think that's our role. Uh, we want to keep districts as much as we can, more or less where they have been. Um, and so as part of that, we would, you know, again, seek to treat incumbents who aren't eligible to run again uh, pretty sensitively. But our main goal is to not put two incumbents together artificially. Another question that we've had all this, again, this growth in the inner city, and some of those are in the traditionally North Nashville African-American community. A lot of it's been infill. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, people feel like that's been gentrification. A lot more white people moving in. Mm -hmm. The commission in the past has tried to maintain some kind of racial composition so that African-American representation would be fair in the council, and for that matter, in the school board. Uh, are you concerned about being able to draw the lines in the North Nashville area and, and maintain its historic uh, African-American uh, culture and, and character? Sure. Well, I mean, I think fundamentally for us, like I said earlier, we want to draw lines in a way that keeps established communities together. Um, that's regardless of what, what part of the county that, that, that you're in or sort of what, what your demographic uh, category is. Um, Particularly for race and ethnicity, um, we do need to be mindful of the Voting Rights Act. We take our, our, our responsibility there very seriously. Um, that calls on us to avoid uh, diluting the ability of minority communities to elect the representatives of their choosing when we draw district lines. So that's that's kind of fundamentally what we want to do. We don't want to artificially put kind of a, a, a black or African-American community together that doesn't have anything in common. We don't want to artificially split them up. We want to try to use the, the um, lines that we draw in concert with the redistricting principles to reflect communities as they exist. To go through the rest of the process for approval, once the Planning Commission comes up with its plan and, and the Commission approves it, it's sent to the Council, they can either accept it or reject it. If they reject it, the Council has to come up with their own plan and both go before the voters for a referendum to decide which one. Is, and that has happened at least once in Metro history. I, that would obviously be very uh, a delay in the whole, fa whole situation and in particular it would be expensive because it may well be a special election to have to do that so what are you doing to work with the council kind of on the front end as best you can so that you're all sort of in accord as best you can when you actually present your plan sure so definitely one of our goals is to bring a plan that is broadly acceptable to the community and to the council forward um, we don't want to, we don't see our role as bringing something that, that is divisive or that sort of narrowly benefits one group or another. We want something that's got a lot of consensus behind it. And so we've designed a public engagement process for that where we try to hear from people who council members are also hearing from, um, kind of how they view their communities, what they want for their districts. Um, we did also, before we received the census data, uh, check in individually with council members and school board members and just kind of walk them through our process, like the things that we would be doing, things that we would be looking at. We kind of shared some early projections that we had just so that they could start thinking through kind of how their district compared to the rest of the county. And then we just asked them kind of to, to fill us in, like how their uh, districts have changed over the past 10 years, where the community, you know, different communities are, what changes, changes they've seen that we should know about for redistricting. I suspect um, all of that. 
I suspect one thing that council members are concerned about is whether they're going to get thrown in a district with somebody else who's also an incumbent. Um, what do you do to try to take care of that? I mean, I, you can't completely rule it out, but it may be easier, I guess, since some council members are term limited and can't run again. Yeah, I mean, our sense is, I mean, generally we want to, like I said, kind of respect where the districts have been and that, that sort of provides a little bit of um, assurance for that we won't put incumbents together. Um, then we, we are most mindful where we've got two incumbents who are uh, eligible to run again. You know, we want to try not to combine them. And there it's just kind of keeping in mind kind of where they are in their district as we, we start sort of working with the district lines. Frank Claxton, thank you so much for joining us. I think it's, you've, you've uh, good luck with the work you've got ahead of you because I know you've got quite a bit to do and maybe I'll have you f further back into the program uh, and back on the program again once you get a little further along in the district and the actual plan has been submitted and we see where we are in the process. Sure, well, th thanks so much for having me. Um, I encourage everybody who's watching to visit our website, take our survey, and get, you know, get involved. Let us know what you want for the future of your council district. And again, where is that uh, website? Sure, uh, redistrict.nashville.gov. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. That's Inside Politics for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, you can go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.